Welcome back, once again adventurers, to Let's Play Steinscape Zero. In the last episode, Rintaro re requisitioned the aid of Amadeus Kurusu in his search for the missing Kagari Shina. Without divulging too much information, Rintaro and Amadeus Kurusu Search the uh, databases for any sign of uh, Kagari, but uh, nothing has turned up. And uh, right at this moment, Rintaro just happened to bump into Ferris and Ruka while conversing with Amadeus Kurusu. And Ruka has just overheard um, our little errant AI. Yeah. Yeah, probably not a good idea to let them know about Amadeus Kurusu. Maho might get mad. I quickly hid the smartphone behind my back. That's uh, certainly not suspicious at all. As in, it's very suspicious. I'd, uh, it seems that uh, Amadeus Kurusu is quite upset with us. And now Ferris is curious as to who exactly Rintaro was talking to. Yeah, これは It shouldn't matter if they found out. But, uh, too little too late. But I still felt guilty, so I closed the Amadeus app. Hopefully Amadeus Kurusu will forgive us later. Now we were talking to someone about finding a missing person. Uh, uh, Again, a half truth, technically not a lie. So Ferris noticed that uh, Tara was talking on a smartphone to Amadeus Kurusu. Well, it, to be honest, it is a private matter of sorts. Did I look like she needed to worry about me? Perhaps. But, well, if she saw me talking to my smartphone in a place like this, I guess I could understand that. Uh, it's, uh, it's not that kind of trouble, Ferris. I'm not sure how much we can tell them about um, Kagari Shina. Probably about as much as we could tell Amadeus Kurusu. Thank you. No, wait a second. Both Ferris and Rukiko had lived in Akihabara since they were born. Both of their families held important positions here. Maybe asking them wouldn't be such a bad idea after all. Well, uh, it might be worth a shot, considering the fact that Fabris has a network of contacts around Akihabara. She might be able to pick something up off the grapevine concerning uh, Kagari's activities these past 12 years. I told them that I was looking for a girl who'd gone missing 12 years ago in Akihabara. Of course, I didn't tell them that she was from the future, or that she was Mayuri's daughter. Unfortunately, we, uh, 
We could tell you, Faerus Nyanyan, but we'd have to kill you. Or swear you to silence. そういう話に心当たりはないかだけでも聞いてもらえれば助かるんだが。Well, uh, even if this doesn't pan out, at least we tried. うーん、わかったにゃ。とりあえずフェイリスの方は黒木に聞いてみるにゃ。Maybe her、uh, manservant might know a thing or two. Kuroki was. Uh, her family butler. He served the Akihas for an incredibly long time. I'd met him several times in several world lines, no less. In the same way that Faerus naturally looked like a maid, Kuroki just naturally looked like a butler. Come to think of it, it was rather strange for a maid to have a butler for a servant. And it looks like she'll、uh, get in touch with the customers over at、uh, Queen May's. I'll ask her about her and her father and her father and her father and her father. And Ruka will talk to his father as well as the other、uh, people at the shrine. We'll see what they might know. So, I'll ask her about her. Even if、uh, all the information we get about Kaguya is nothing more than rumor, it's as good a lead as any. Both Kuroki and Rukako's dad knew a lot of people, and they had a far better chance of finding someone than we did, or the police for that matter. I'd hoped it, they could at least find some small clue. So, what was that, Rukako? So, what was that, Rukako? I would say、uh, gatherings for the、uh, guests over at Yanabayashi. And once again, I called it. Apparently, one of those guests is going to be staying for a long time. So basically, Ruka was on an errand for his father. If they were a guest of Rukuko's father, they must be fairly old then. I would think so. And from what I'd heard yesterday, they probably had some unique and、uh, questionable hobbies. Yeah, probably shouldn't bring that up in front of Faerus, much less Ruka. But Ruka enjoys、uh, going out on errands. Fun. Rukuko shared the same blood as his dad, so perhaps he had some latent interest in those hobbies.、Um, No. I think it's safe to say that、uh, Ruka has absolutely no idea of what his father's so called hobbies are, and that's a good thing. A very good thing. Of course, Daru knows, obviously. I gave him that warning, then went to leave. Well, I tried to leave, but、uh, something came up, it seems. <laughs> Looks like、uh, Ruka's still trying to carry most of the、uh, shopping. Indeed, as I said before, you are far from、uh, the build of Daru, let alone Tanoji. Looks like we'll、uh, have to step in and help out.、Hmm. It's, uh, I think that's probably too much for even the both of them. 
I was three people they should manage it. By the way, um, I don't like tea, any tea at all. Coffee or some other beverage or soda, for example. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper would be nice. Yeah. And we don't want to disturb the guests either. So I couldn't bear to see him struggle like that, so I'd carried his bags to the shrine with him. And Ferris had gone back to May Queen. So then you still more. Kono Nimotsu. You could anon them with three the Hokobuni or Muri Gordo. Hm. That makes two of us. Bokurate. So, um, it seems that Ruka has still been uh, practicing with uh, the Demon Sword Samadari, which, uh, need I remind you, was a sword that Rintaro purchased for 980 yen from a, I guess, a second hand store or something. Sword exercises. Ah, that's right. The uh, school of swordsmanship. That was um, part and parcel of the personality of the persona of uh, Ho in Kiyoma. That was the training I'd given him when he told me he felt too much like a girl. Seishin Zanmaryu ka. And that's, uh, I keep forgetting that name. Seishin Zanma School. The School of Swordsmanship. A style of swordsmanship taught by Hoin Kiyoma to Ruko Rushibara, the descendant of the ancient protectors of Akihabara. It also functions to strengthen the mind and quell the evil flames that lurk within Urushibara. Only the Cursed Blade Samadare can bring out its true power. One of its secret techniques is the Type 3 Cherry Blossom Rage. At least that's what Okabe said when he made it up. Yeah, Seishin, Zanma and Samadare are part of uh, the Chinibiu nonsense that Rintaro uh, basically improvised on the spot to try and uh, bring out Ruka's self-confidence because uh, whenever he normally works at the shrine, Ruka wears uh, Miko shrine robes, which uh, would be odd because Miko robes are traditionally worn by women, and Ruka is not a woman, he is a man. And, uh, many years ago, or I should say some some time ago, um, Rintaro ran into Ruka while Ruka was being harassed by a bunch of uh, creepy perverted otaku who thought that Ruka was a girl because of how he was dressed. And they wanted to take some photos even though he tried without uh, to any sort of success that uh, those were actually hit the clothes of his job. And then when the truth was revealed, the otaku got upset and left, but uh, Hoin Kiyoma decided to take Ruko Rushibara under his wing and train him in the Seishin Zan Zanma School of Swordsmanship. It was so stupid, I couldn't even laugh. Sumimasu. Thinking back, I was amazed he put up with that nonsense. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the one floor of uh, well, that's the other floor of uh, Ruka. In addition to having absolutely no self confidence whatsoever, Ruka always believed in uh, everything that uh, Ho and Kiyoma 
told him. And this is sadly true of uh, Rukuko's female counterpart in the Alpha World line. Ruka, and lo and behold, there is uh, Ruka's father. I could hear his voice from their home behind the shrine office. By the way, I should also mention that for those of you who have forgotten, Ruka is not an only child. Ruka's, um, in fact, a lot of Ruka's personality can be uh, attributed to the fact that his uh, older sister, who we've never met, by the way, and who is more tomboyish than anything, um, is uh, quite abusive towards her little brother. Which is why it probably explains why Ruka has absolutely no, or, or at the very least, little self confidence. He should have. But we should be making our way back. To the, um, we should be making our way back to the lab, if you can even call it that anymore. Rukuko bowed deeply as I left Yanabayashi Shrine. On my way home, I thought about what the two of them had said. Is that Ferris and Ruka? Probably. About helping us out, it seems. They might not be able to help us too much with, well, in regards to uh, the truth with Kagari Shina, but that's not the only trouble that Rontaro Okabe has. Because after all, he is still plagued by the events of July 28th. And that experience has taken a far greater toll on Rintaru's psyche and sanity than he would ever care to admit. Of course, it goes without saying, if a trained physician and psychologist is unable to cure him of his malady, in what possible hope could a uh, shrine, well, I would say maiden, but Ruka's a man, and a uh, cat girl maid be able to do in this current uh, situation? I didn't realize until after they had spoken. I'd gone to Amadeus Kurusu before I'd gone to anyone else. Looks like Kurusu Makase still has a grip on Rintaro's heart, it seems. I brought up the app and started talking with her before I'd even realized it. So we went to an artificial intelligence instead of going to even Mayuri. But Amadeus Kurusu wasn't the real Kurusu. But that voice, the way she acted, <laughs> perfect mimicry, if ever there was, all of it reminded me of Kurusu. All of it brought back the emotions I tried to hide, not just the uh, trauma, but the affections as well. Believe it or not, there were some good times and uh, bad times as well. There was an incoming call on my phone from Amadeus. It was from Amadeus Kurusu. She was probably there to complain about me hanging up on her, her earlier. Probably a good idea. That would be a safe bet. I would just be like Amadeus Kurusu. <laughs> but it's uh, probably not a good idea to uh, get in touch with her. But I didn't answer the phone. And 
indeed. I'm becoming too dependent on Amadeus Kurusu. I didn't answer any of the other calls that came that day either. Hmm. The United States of America, California. Hmm. He tells me, me we're not in Akihabara anymore. The reporter, Jessica Edmund, had rushed to the scene at her director's orders, and she was pissed off about it. She dreamed of Hollywood, and even be, been in a movie once. So how did she end up reporting this crap? Well, uh, them's the bricks. Looks like, uh, Jessica Edmund doesn't, uh, like being out in California at night. What could they, uh, what could they be covering? It looks like uh, Jessica is arguing with her director. <laughs> some sort of quarrel, it seems. She hated herself for not being able to say anything. Her stupid pride got in the way. She dreamed of being a Hollywood actress, but all she'd gotten was a small part in a B-movie. It had never gone anywhere after that. Then she had a kid and come back home. Still, she loved her kid. She wanted to make sure that they were taken care of, no matter what she had to do. So, the game was Apparently, something's been going on around the area. She went into the bushes, and there she saw it. <laughs> Something tells me we're not going to like what we've just found. Several bodies, all brutally mu mutilated. This way, the people who are in the world are in the world. In the past, the people who are in the world are in the world. In the past, the the Artificial intelligence no can kill or connect data to Saratori. Five scientists have gone missing, and three of them were believed to have been researching artificial intelligence. Could have this have something to do with the Amadeus development? Which is. which, if so, would be rather strange. But even stranger is the sight before us. None of these bodies are human so to speak. They're all monkeys, or gorillas, or... But why are they out here? その背後には人工知能技術の発展に反対する原理的宗教主義者たちによる活動も影響しているのではないかと見て、当局ではさらに捜査を続けているもようです。Radical religious fundamentalists who oppose the development of artificial intelligence, eh? We found someone uh, on a previous world line who um, assaulted us, but that man was um, under the control of a certain uh, fellow scientist who, um, you know, who was uh, working on said AI. We'll call him Leskinen. There we go. Wonder how Jessica will hold up this situation. 
こちらの現場で発見された遺体に関して当初人間のものと思われておりましたがその後の警察の調べによりますとそれがチンパンジーやオランウータンといった複数の猿の死体であることが分かりました。This is、uh, truly a bizarre situation here. What could a bunch of mutilated monkeys have to do with、uh, Amadeus? ただし、これらの遺体について、一部、脳及び頭部が欠損しているものもあるとのことで、警察では、猟奇的事件として、地域住民への警戒を訴えており、Maniac would probably be a compliment. So someone's dissected their brains, it seems. But what does that have to do with AI development? That's, um. rather strange. Hmm. How is it all connected? And,、uh, we're back with Rintaro. Looks like we're back in Tokyo Denke. No, o k a m e And we're just shooting the breeze with the colleagues, it seems. Yes. Okay. 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 Fellow classmate likes Kitchen Tokai, a long established Western style restaurant in Jimbo Cho. It offers delicious food at a reasonable price, so at lunchtime it's filled with salaryman and students. The curry is especially popular. Well,、uh, to be fair, I do love good curry. Or perhaps they will、uh, want to、uh, go to Mondai instead. Oh, it's a, another curry restaurant. It's famous for its full bodied European style curry, but it's a little outside the price range of the college students. It comes with endless fries. How many fries do they make? But it's、uh, apparently this student really loves curry. I'm going to go to the next one. Yeah, that much hasn't changed, unfortunately. Maybe, maybe not.、Huh? I was talking with my friends after class. I'd really started to get used to this. Normally, Rintaro would just hang out with Daru at the university, but、uh, having shed the skin of Ho in Kiyoma, he has truly.、Uh, Supposedly assimilated himself into、uh, ordinary life, as it were. Before the summer, I'd felt really out of place at school, but now it didn't seem so bad. Back then, I thought I was special. But now I knew better. As long as you make the effort to fit in, you can find a place to belong. Eh.、Yeah. People. People can change. No, they change whether they want to or not. It was too late now, but I'd learned something about myself. It really was too late. So, did you? So, did you? So, did you? As I headed for the air. Exit. I realized that I recognized one of the people passing through my field of vision. He just ghosted for, across、uh, the hallway just for a moment. But、uh, that was definitely Leskinen. Leskinen, Kyonju? What are you doing in,、uh, in the name of Steinsgate? What are you doing here at Tokyo Denke, Leskinen? My college went out of its way to attract exchange students, so it wasn't unusual to see foreigners. But still. Yeah, I still don't trust him, by the way. He knows. And he's apparently vanished. I hurried after him, but the person I just saw was already gone. 
Was I just mistaken? Come to think of it, the professor being here wouldn't be strange. He might have come to meet with my advisor, Zaki, the associate professor. Zaki had wanted to get to know him after all. I'd glance in the direction he'd gone, then left the school for Akihabara. When I came out of the turnstile, the radio building was right in front of me, like always. This is where it all began, where it all started. The time I seen that Suza had used to come here was probably still on the roof. Even if people didn't go up there so long, uh, go up there often, it was still amazing that no one had found out after so long. I think we'd have Ferris to thank for that. Indeed, it was all thanks to Ferris. She'd rented out the roof of the building and sealed it off. Of course, I hadn't come here to look at the time machine. Indeed, there are actually quite a few shops in the radio building, none of which we've um, ever really looked at. I'd gotten messages from Rukiko and Ferris after I'd left the lab last night. Both of them had asked, and neither of them were able to get any useful information for me. Well, looks like we've struck out. Though it made sense when I thought about it. If there was a missing persons report, someone might remember the police doing something, but there wasn't. But Ferris had said something interesting. Seems like she might have found a lead after all. I wonder. A ghost with twin tails, eh? Bit of an odd rumor. Now I'd be willing to pass this off as a uh, complete fabrication, but uh, if memory serves, uh, we do actually know somebody who could, I guess you could say that they have twin tails. That is to say, twin pigtails. So it doesn't really uh, take much of a stretch of imagination to guess that that so-called ghost is uh, probably Suzuha Mane jumping through time with her time machine, trying to uh, talk to people. And uh, that phenomenon has uh, now become the subject of rumor. I wonder if Rintaro would make that connection though. Probably wouldn't matter even if he did. And he does, apparently. That was definitely Suzaha. What would she do if she knew people thought she was a ghost? Probably nothing, because people think she's a ghost. I held ba back a laugh I, as I tried to imagine it, and then headed up for the radio building. My goal, of course, was to find information on Kagari. So there have been sightings of Suzaha, but not Kagari. This was where she vanished. Which meant that this is where I was most likely to find clues. Of course, it was also the place where, um, everything first happened. I went around to each store inside the radio building and asked, but didn't learn anything. Probably a good idea to stay away from the 8th floor, and the roof for that matter. Of course, Suza would have done the same thing, so I didn't expect much. But that didn't mean I could just stop. I did promise her after all. The part shop. The commercial facilities. Even the back alleys. We're certainly uh, scouring Akihabara from top to bottom. 
Even after all that, I went around all around Akihabara asking people about Kagari. And as before, no dice. But I didn't learn anything useful. Indeed. Some people told me the same story about the uh, ghost and twin tails, that is Suzuha, but nobody knew anything about Kagari. If a little girl got kidnapped or got into an accident, someone might have witnessed that. But going missing was an entirely different thing. If Kagari Sheena vanished of her own free will, all anyone would see was a ten-year-old girl walking down the street. Nobody would remember that ten years later. I tried to think again if there was a better way. If the police and the government weren't of any use, that left someone connected to the underworld. Prob you probably mean to say underground, Rintaro, because I don't think we could um, hire the Yakuza or anyone connected to organized crime to help us out. <laughs> Indeed, that sounds like someone that something that Ho and Kiyoma would do would say. As soon as I said it aloud, I drove the idea from my mind. How stupid. That's something the old me would have thought of. I'd given that stuff up. Of course. If memory serves, I'd run all over Akihabara looking for something once before. I wasn't looking for a person then, but a thing. The infamous IBN 5100, if memory serves. Six months ago in the Alpha World line, I gone looking for the same thing that Suza had searched for in the past. Back then, that's right, Kurisu was with me. There's a flashback of Muntaro and Kurisu dragging the IBN 5100 through the streets of Akihabara. When Kurisu and I had learned there was an IBN 5100 in Rukuko's storeroom, we'd worked together to carry the heavy thing. <laughs> is uh, Kurisu griping, as always. Not all the memories were bad, Rintaro. Thinking back, all she'd ever done was complain. She was strong-willed, bratty, and hated to lose, but she was still so lonely. <laughs> Once again, I'd taken my phone out of my pocket without realizing it. Amadeus Kurisu. Since I hadn't picked up any of her calls yesterday, she hadn't called me at all today. I stared at the, I at the Amadeus icon for the moment. And then put my phone back in my pocket. We're back at the lab again. Mm. And it looks like uh, Suzuha and Daru have uh, come up short as well. When I got back to the lab, I saw that Daru was completely exhausted. There was no need to even ask. It was obvious he hadn't found a single clue. Suzuha had been doing this for over half a year, so her face didn't portray her emotions anymore. Daru didn't even bother asking me how it went. He could probably tell from the look on my face. Suzuha 
それを僕ら素人が今さらまた蒸し返したところで新しい発見なんてあるわけないんだよな Thank you for stating the stating the complete obvious Diary said what I've been thinking but try not to say Thank you for stating the complete obvious At least、uh, Suza is grateful for our efforts. Suza evidently had no intention of giving up. I think it's safe to say we're all pretty involved at the moment, Suza. Baka yena yo! Kodomo no sekinin wa oya no sekinin da no joko! I hate to break it to you, Daru, but that would technically be Mayuri in this case. Tosa! Although, having said that. Ne, ima no do. Kanari papa pokate to mon nake do. Nan nara. Feel free to、uh, completely ignore him or just walk out of the lab, Suza. <sighs> Watching these two always gave me a strange feeling. For a while after they met, first met, they were complete strangers. Now they were father and child. And age wise, they were exactly the same. Maybe I could understand how Suzo was feeling, but I had no idea what Daru was going through. Tonika, Ku, Boku, the Eatai Nova, Tada Muyami, a Terani Sagasta Tokuru, the Dameda Rute Kutu. Joe, Dosro, the Yuno. That is a、uh, very good question. And one that we don't have the answer to for the time being. But when we return, adventurers, we shall、uh, put our heads together and try to、uh, come up with a solution as to how to find the missing Kagari Shina, if indeed we can actually find any sort of clue. Given how lackluster our investigation has been、uh, to this point. As always, until next we meet.